All right, so we're facing north on Marigold, Marigold Drive. Uh, we're coming right up to the property. Whoops, had it in reverse. <laughs> there we go. And we're going to take a left uh, through the Blue Gate onto the easement road. It's a little hot out here today. There we go. Uh, so the property does actually have a little bit of frontage right here on Marigold. Just so we can see that, we'll pull up a little further. It's got direct frontage. It doesn't have an approach, uh, but there are some easements to get to different parts of the property without even putting in an approach. So here where the road curves. And we're looking at track two. You can see the survey stake right there. Looking down uh, the road, that's mostly track one. So we're parked directly in front of track two, kind of where the road curves here. So you could certainly put in your own private uh, approach here, uh, but if you didn't want to do that, or if you didn't want to do that right away, you've got some other options, and we'll show you those right now. If I can back up properly here. It's early, early, early spring, more like late winter in the Ozarks. We don't have any leaves on the trees yet, uh, but it's gonna hit 80 degrees today, so that's good. Good day to look at properties, good day to, to take drone videos, because with the leaves not being on the trees yet, you really can see uh, what everything looks like. Uh, so if you don't wanna mess with your own approach right away, all you have to do is pull in here, go through the gate, and there's a road easement. Uh, the main road goes to the left. There's actually a road easement to the right, where you can pull right in, kind of on the edge of this field. Um, and look at the maps to, to see all the details and check out the drone video. But basically, you kind of hug the edge of that field, take a right after those cedar trees, and you can cut back um, onto the property that way. And not only do you not have to install an approach right away, but that also gets you over the, uh, uh, the little valley area at the south end of the property. Then you don't have to try to cross that. So um, to get to the south or middle part of the property, that's a good option. To get to the north part of the property, um, well, the, the middle or the north part of the property. We're going to show you that right now. We've got a, a gravel easement road that goes down to the bottom area, and that'll take you directly to the property and across the property. Um, and that, I think, is, is out of the thousands of reasons this is a special track, uh, that's, that's one of the big ones, is that you do have vehicle access uh, almost right down to the water. So you've got high and dry building sites. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, you've got good gentle access right to the Niagara River. There's a power line there. The power line goes down the hill. Uh, it's in a couple different spots out here and the easements are in place for the power to be run so it's available if and when you need it. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've got a couple of the guys out here working today. They're kind of uh, installing some of the gravel roads, which is a work in progress. Um, it's just, every, everything's been weather dependent and we've had some, uh, a really, really rainy uh, season this year. This last week is the first time it's actually been dry. So the guys are out here taking advantage of that. So we come to the bottom of the hill here, and we're gonna cut to the right. And that's what's gonna take us back to the, to the property. Beautiful bottom field here. Oh, and there's a dump truck in our way. <laughs> that's okay. We'll just go right around him. Brand new, fresh road. Okay. Oh, I left my keys in the ignition. People hate, people hate when I do that. They clang around so badly. Okay. So, I mean, you're definitely gonna want a truck or an SUV, uh, especially if it's been raining because these are uh, gravel roads, minimum maintenance type roads. 
Uh, there wouldn't normally be a huge pile of rock right in the middle of the roadway, <laughs> but the guys are, are literally in the process of, of putting this together. So there you can see the river down there. Uh, across the way is uh, Maggard's Canoe Rental, I believe. They're doing some work on their uh, riverfront. I mean, you'll see a lot of different, uh, if you look at the maps, uh, a lot of little uh, family type resorts in this area because this is an extremely popular section of river. Unbelievably popular. Not only is the Niagua uh, one of the uh, most popular rivers in the Ozarks, this is the, uh, I sound like a salesman now, but this is the best section on the best river because you can actually fish for trout, rainbow trout and brown trout in this short section of water um, directly adjoining this property. I said that about my keys and then I still didn't take them out. I'd have to stop though. Okay, we'll just put up with it for a minute. So we're actually getting close to the property. I've got my map right map open on this other map or other uh, Apple device, the iPad here. Oops. It's often a good idea if you're a MapRite user to uh, to set up your MapRite deal um, when you're in a nearby town, when you know you've got stellar cell service, uh, and then just leave it open uh, because it will work once it's open. I think it works on GPS. Okay, we're getting closer to the property. This bottom field is just gorgeous. You can see the fringe of trees just starting to get their, their leaves. A lot of willow trees. I think willows are one of the first or the last. Someone might want to Google that to get their leaves. And then on the other side of the trees is the Niagara River. And, and we'll get to that as well, of course. Super, super special property. I believe it's just a 12 mile stretch down river from Bennett Springs State Park where you can fish for uh, fish for trout. Unbelievable. We've talked to several different neighbors and different um, resorts who, who wanted to buy these tracks. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and they just say that nothing in this area in this area ever comes up for sale. These small tracks just never come up for sale. And we can attest to that fact as we've been looking for uh, a property like this for 10 or 15 years. This one was beyond our wildest dreams. Okay, this that's track three. So we're getting close to track two. Now, while it is uh, the most narrow on the east side by the county road, um, the business end of the property, the, the river end of the property is where it's widest. Uh, and that's where it, it really, really shines. I actually don't have the map with the dimensions right in front of me, but I believe it's something like 300 feet wide at the river, which is just awesome. There you can see a survey stake. So we're about to pull onto track two. Um, these tracks are fully surveyed, by the way, with most of the lines marked with fence posts. There you can see that uh, house up there. I think that's owned by one of the resorts. So they would have a stellar view, but uh, no way to, to safely get to the water. It's a, a sheer drop. Whereas on your property here, uh, you could potentially have a very similar view if you built uh, kind of where the hilltop crested at that upper field, yet you still have very good access to the river. And we'll check that out in a minute. But I wanted to show you uh, one of my favorite features about track two first. Okay, so all this all this beautiful bottom land you see here, uh, that's on the property. This is going to be within the floodplain. You really don't want to build um, down here in this river bottom. Potentially, if you were to elevate your structure and just do, I guess what we would call a day cabin, and we've done that before in river bottoms. I, I mean, potentially. But anything that you need a mortgage for, anything where someone's actually going to live, um, you would have to do the full engineered concrete um, pylons and, and all that stuff, and that could get very, very expensive. Now, certainly people do that, and a river like this is, is where you will 
see something like that. Um, but they generally only do that if they don't have another option, <laughs> if they don't have a high and dry spot. And you have another option. You have many options. Okay, let's hop out here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to do a drone video later today as well, and we'll post that on the listing page. Um, now we've just we've done just a small bit of cleanup on this property. Uh, this tract was logged of the the bigger commercial uh, timber within the last year or two. As you can see, they left a lot, but they did take this had some really big trees that were were ready to be cut. They were basically on on the decline. They were that old, um, and you'll see evidence of some of that. Um, so there wasn't any cleanup. Oftentimes we'll come in and we'll clean stuff up. We really haven't done that on these tracks. All we did here was we took the skid loader and, and pushed some stuff out of the way because we discovered on track two, I was gonna pull my truck up here too. I forgot about that. Well, we'll just walk it. If you walk just up from the, uh, the meadow area, you end up with a, a somewhat level spot right here and this could easily be leveled out more with a piece of equipment, even a skid loader, uh, where you basically, you're looking now down into the bottom area. You can see the river in the distance beyond those big sycamore trees. And you'd, you'd wanna verify this for yourself, but I believe that this is out of the floodplain. I mean, it would take a monstrous amount of water for it to get up this high. It would have to, uh, to fill that entire bottom field, uh, including the other side of the river and be up about 15 feet to ever get to this area. We'll check the flood maps on MapRite to be sure, but uh, I mean, this is just, out of all these tracks, all these tracks out here, uh, this track two, this spot is, is pretty much the only one I'm aware of that has a situation like this. So you've got a potential building site right here overlooking that bottom. And I mean, you're a 30 second walk from the water or 10 or 15 seconds with your four-wheeler. So that's pretty awesome. There is a trail there, but um, it quickly angles off the property. So you've got this spot right here. Uh, it does have a little slant to it, but this could be leveled out. It could be done with a skid loader pretty quickly. Uh, the property then goes up to that hill and it levels, levels off again. Drone video is gonna be helpful in looking at this one, I'm sure. But yeah, this, there's a bobcat right down there. There's a skid loader. <laughs> yeah, out of, out of all these tracts, if I could pick one site to do a, a house or a cabin, it would probably be right here on this track too, right where we're standing. Unless you were big on views. And then again, you'd probably go uh, further up toward the, that higher meadow. But if you were big on, on being close to the water, um, if you had a you know a family and, and wanted to splash around a lot and really enjoy the summer, then oh man, this is nice. So again, we'll have to check to, to look at the map right map that we have because that does have a floodplain layer. Uh, and I believe that this is gonna be high and dry according to that. So um, if so, then this is practically unique to have something that's high and dry and still have easy access right to the water. Very, very cool. So let's go check out the river. If I haven't already mentioned it, you can go to instantacres.com to see if this property is still available. We store all the videos on YouTube. The buyers request that we leave them on there uh, so that they can continue to view them. So that's what we do. So unfortunately, just because this is on YouTube doesn't necessarily mean it's available. Uh, but all you have to do is go to instantacres.com. We generally just have six or eight or ten hand-picked properties on there, so it really doesn't take long to look through. Oh, this is beautiful. I love those huge sycamore trees. You can, I mean, sycamores jump right out at you because they, um, they have that pure white upper part. And I believe that the guys stuck this sign for track two roughly in the middle um, 
of the frontage. I don't know for sure. So let's just do some walking and we'll, we'll check this out. You can see a couple trees down over there. Um, we were trying to do a quick little trail right to the river earlier today. We got a new skid loader that we were playing with and that is right on the uh, edge of this property. So we could check that out as well, I'm sure. And again, uh, with no leaves on the trees, I mean, this is gonna look completely different in just a couple weeks. But we just couldn't, really couldn't wait to get this video. Looking into the sun makes everything dark as well. But there you can see that, uh, that site where we just were, that higher site, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's go check out the river. So this amount of frontage is uh, basically unheard of. When you're talking about premium uh, river frontage and lake frontage, premium water frontage, uh, oftentimes it's measured by the foot. If you get up to Lake of the Ozarks, the stuff is priced by the foot of frontage. Um, and, and similar um, with major named rivers. And this being basically the top of the list, uh, if this were priced by the, by the frontage, it would be three times as much. So you're happy to, I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna walk down to the, the edge here. Oh, those are pretty flowers. See, I'm not sure where we wanna start because I, oh, there's the river off in the distance there. You know what, let's go do this. We're gonna walk uh, toward this edge of the property where the guys started that little bobcat skid loader trail. And we'll go down to the water and then we'll just head down river while we're still recording to kind of look at the, uh, look at the river. This is a full 10 acres. Uh, this was slated to be two separate parcels, two five acre parcels. And then at the last minute, we decided, you know what, we're just going to leave it as a full 10. We're going to leave all that water frontage on one property. Here's where the guys kind of started a, a trail with the skid loader. And I think because of all that rain, they got into a place where it was still a little damp there. And they didn't want to get the skid loader stuck, so they stopped. Uh, but if, if this were uh, re-split into two fives, uh, the price would be substantially higher. When you buy the whole 10, you're kind of getting a, a special value, as they say. Look at that gravel bar. Oh, man. Okay. Now, if you bought property before, you know the value of a recent survey. There's a post that's right along the boundary line. As you look through that meadow, you can see several other posts. So, I mean, we know precisely where these boundaries are. Like we've got kind of a big sycamore in our way there. We can go around. We generally try to keep these videos short, but uh, this is kind of a special one. Here's a good path right down to the water. There we go. Interesting rocks. So it's pretty early in the season. You're not going to have any floaters or or very few floaters or fishermen. Although, like I said, it is just about 80 degrees today. But in the, in the summer, when things start really moving, uh, this is a popular, popular, one of the most popular areas. Um, so you've got the resort directly across. There we go, look at that. Look at that. Wow. Wow, looking down river, just as gorgeous. Oh jeez, that's incredible. You can actually hear uh, that little section about 200 feet up of rapids, little miniature whitewater rapids, and that's actually referenced on one of the river maps, that little section of rapids, that's right at the property. You'll see when we get up there, when I say rapids, um, it's not like 
in Colorado with the, the, the big rafts or anything. It's just these small little white caps uh, that happen to be right in that area. It's pretty cool, actually. Look at all this gravel. If you're doing building projects, if you're doing landscaping projects, I mean, you have tens of thousands of dollars worth of raw material here. These big rocks have uh, a million uses. The gravel has a million uses. The large, large rocks have a million uses. I mean, if you've ever actually had to pay for rocks or gravel or sand, um, you know that this is, this is a gold mine here. Since we did have that rain a few days ago, the river's not really as clear as I would expect it to be. I would say after a couple more days, it would, it would uh, clear a little more. Wow. You can hear those, that little miniature rapid area. We've got a sandy, gravelly mix here. This looks like some type of deer, ta deer trail. The guys saw about 20 deer when they pulled in the gate this morning. And about 20 minutes ago, they saw several turkeys right up by where the dump truck was. Unbelievable. You can actually see to the bottom, even though the, the water is uh, churned up a little bit. And we haven't reached the other boundary yet. I mean, we're talking major river frontage here. I think it'd be cool to bring, uh, bring your tent out and clear a spot right about here and camp where you can hear that uh, that river and, and see those rapids, really special. There you can see the rapids. Just amazing, I mean, we'll never have another property like this. This is just, this really is unique. See some deer prints down there in the sand. You can fish right from shore. <clears throat> Excuse me. In addition to trout, you're going to have bass in here, catfish, all kinds of good stuff. Nice for swimming. Generally, like I said, it is a little more clear, uh, which makes it even better for, for swimming for little kids. The water moves a little more quickly here. Up where we started, uh, it moved a little more slowly. So, I mean, you have both options. Oh, this is interesting. We've got a natural little, uh, almost like a launch point for canoes here. And that's just, that is on the property. There you can see the, the survey marker for the other edge of the water frontage. So this really cool little natural area is directly on the property. Oh, that's great. So you'll probably um, end up creating a few trails that come down. You can see the, the timber and stuff. Some of that may be from the loggers, but a lot of it's just from uh, trees upriver that have washed down the, when the water's been up. This is pretty, pretty special right here, this spot. This is cool. You could bring your canoe or your kayak. And I mean, this looks like a, it looks like someone created this to launch a canoe, but they didn't. This is just pure natural here. A canoe or a raft, gentle right into the water. Wow, there's that pretty house up there. This is possibly the longest video we've ever done. But there is so much to see here, oh my goodness. Amazing, amazing property. 
we've reflected a discount in the price because uh, uh, it could use uh, some cleanup, some touch up here and there, but that gives you the opportunity to, to get it um, a little more cheaply than it otherwise would be. And you get to put your personal, personal stamp on it. Make it yours. That is awesome. I'm just probably going to hang out here for a while, actually. Check out instantacres.com if we have the listing on there. Uh, we'll put the drone video on that we'll do later today. And you can check that out. We should have an interactive map. We should have all kinds of good stuff. So let us know um, if you have any questions. And we, we really look forward to, to hearing from you on this property. Track 2 at Riverside at the Niangua in the beautiful Ozarks, about 20 miles uh, northwest of Lebanon, Missouri.